Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Nuclear Heat. I'm your guest, Vince Russo. Today, I want to talk about a few topics, but I'm going to bring all those topics together as one. And basically, there's some questions I've been asked during the week, uh, some observations of, you know, watching other television shows. And it just seems that everything always seems to lead to, um, you know, what really are the fixes that wrestling needs today? And, um, you know, I I'm talking about how can, how can professional wrestling maximize the audience? Man, I was reading a report today on one of the websites, and I got to tell you, I was, I was, you know, greatly concerned with the house show attendance numbers uh, you know, that the WWE has been drawing, you know, you know, 2,000, 3,000, 3,500 people. I mean, just some really, really low numbers. Uh, we know where the ratings are. You know, the ratings got a little bit of a spike after um, that uh, TLC pay-per-view uh, because what they did with Reigns at the end of that night worked. So that created a buzz and created a little interest for the weeks that follow. Um, but I even, I'm, I'm even going to talk about that and where they are now uh, looking back at TLC. But the first thing I want to talk about is I was watching uh, one of my favorite shows yesterday on, uh, on FXX. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Um, I love this show. I'm a big fan of this show. I've been a fan of the show for a long time. The reason why I'm bringing it up is they did a show yesterday that literally went all the way back to a show they did in like 2006. So it related to a show that they literally did 10 years ago. And the reason why that's significant, you know, is this, and I say this all the time, and Seinfeld does this all the time as well. <clears throat> if you're a Seinfeld, uh, you know, fan, and as they go from episode to episode over the, um, uh, you know, just the epic nine seasons that Seinfeld put out, you know, as they add characters and events, uh, as the episodes continue, they always go back and relate to those characters and events. Like it was a part of their life and it was a history and they go back and relate to that. And the last night uh, for It's Always Sunny, the whole show was built around 2006. And the reason why I say that is the wrestling business just tends to, from week to week to week to week, forget about what happened the previous week. And I think that is a huge, huge flaw in their character development and what's really stifling them from really getting wrestlers over with ability to that next level. I mean, when you look at that roster now, and, you know, th this could be up for argument, and that's fine. But in, in my opinion and in my mind, the only two guys on the roster that are way over is basically John Cena and Brock Lesnar. And a lot of that has to do with when you look at those guys, they're larger than life. You know, they look like superheroes and they're just, you know, they're the ultimate um, pros. You know, they're, they're good at everything they do and they're very believable. You know, therefore, even bad creative is not really going to hurt their persona. And, you know, fact of the matter is Brock Lesnar doesn't even really talk anyway. But on the other side of the coin, you've got guys that look like stars and that you can do something with. You know, Bray Wyatt comes to mind. Hey, man, as a guy that worked with Shawn Michaels for a long time, Dolph Ziggler comes to mind. But yet those guys that just don't have that larger-than-life air around them, the WWE is just failing to get them over. And there is a reason for that, and that's what I want to talk about today. And um, we'll, we'll start with what I basically just said. 
every other television show has a history and they talk about that history. Uh, you know, like that's why I brought up Sonny. They're going back to something that happened 2006 in the two, 2016 season. Wrestling, not only week to week to week to week, do they forget what happened, but now it's going even, even further than that where in their own show, they're not following up to protect the character. Let me explain to you what I mean first and foremost by protecting a character. When I was writing television, and I was writing it along with Ed Ferrara, when I was writing it on my own, whether it was WWE, WCW, or TNA, it didn't matter. I had a roster of actors. I had a roster of talent. And every time I wrote for a certain talent, I would put myself in their boots, whether it was Norman Smiley or whether it was AJ Styles at TNA or whether it was, uh, you know, I mean, Stone Cold Steve Austin, you know, you name it. it. It doesn't matter. I always put myself in the shoes of the character for a couple of reasons. Every single person is going to act differently under different circumstances. You know, Disco Inferno is not going to react to the same set of circumstances that, say, a Scott Steiner would. Uh, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin is not going to relate to the same set of circumstances that a Goldust would. Every character is different. So when you're writing these scenes and when you're writing for these characters, you have to put yourselves in the shoes of every single character because they all would, their, their, their reactions and the way they would respond and their actions would all be different because these are all unique characters. What tends to happen in the wrestling business is you have your baby faces and you have your heels and baby faces act one way. You know, they wear the white hats and heels act another way and they wear the, the, the black hats. Now, even myself, I find myself using terms of baby faces and heels because they will never, ever disappear, you know, in the in the jargon of wrestling. They're just built into wrestling. But when you think about it, the notion of baby faces and heels is so outdated in 2015, it's not even funny. And I'll explain to you why. There is no one on this planet that does good all the time. The only one who did that, to my knowledge, was Jesus Christ himself. Outside of that, good people sometimes do bad things. On the other side of the coin, bad people sometimes do good things. It's, it's never one way. It's never 100%. Everybody is a shade of gray. And that's just the way life is. Some people love me. Some people hate me. Why? Everybody is a shade of gray. So to have, you know, baby faces all act one way and heels all act another way is absolutely ridiculous. And listen, the proof is in the pudding. Again, if you look at an Austin, you know, Austin wasn't a nice guy, but the fans cheered for him because he is the thing. It's not about baby feels, baby faces and heels. It's about staying consistent with the character. It's about the character always acting like the character would. You know, there, there was a spot on this week's show where um, Kevin Owens attacked Dean Ambrose. Now, you know, I'm going to call Dean Ambrose a baby face, and I'm only saying that because Ambrose is a fan favorite. So, after the after the beatdown, they go to the back. They get a word. They get a word from Ambrose, and Ambrose makes it clear. You know, I'm looking for uh, Owens. I'm going to 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 set the stage straight with Owens, and they set that up very very early in the show. And this is a babyface 
saying it. Now, let, let me put Austin in, in the shoes. Back in the Attitude Era, if Austin would have said, I'm going to get Vince McMahon tonight, then Austin is going to get Vince McMahon tonight. That's part of build, building the character and believing in a character, believing that he, he, he's going to do what he says he's going to do. That's part of having babyface tendencies or being a fan favorite. When you say you're going to do something and then you do it. So Austin would say, I'm going to get Taker, I'm going to get Sean, whatever he said. And when we put ourselves in the shoes of Austin, that had to happen because that character would have got Vince McMahon by the end of the show. So here now you have a fan favorite like Dean Ambrose gets attacked by Owens, basically is pissed off, says he's going to get Owens. The end of the show, Owens is out there wrestling. Uh, um, Roman Reigns, for a good eight to ten minutes, Dean Ambrose is nowhere to be found. So in other words, if I'm a fan of Dean Ambrose, if I want to believe in Dean Ambrose, well, basically Dean Ambrose just lied to me. Dean Ambrose told me I'm going to get Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is out there and Dean Ambrose is nowhere to be found. Now, subconsciously, I don't know if I can believe everything Dean Ambrose says now. So, you know, again, if I'm writing the show and Ambrose says that and he's a fan favorite and I want to, you know, make sure he gets over with the people, I'm going to make sure that he gets to Kevin Owens later on in the show because I want to protect Ambrose. When these guys are unprotected week after week after week after week, nobody's getting over. There were so many examples on last week's show alone. You know, uh, uh, the, the, the Wyatt family is out there. And, you know, the, the, the announces are constantly, you know, painting them as a dangerous family and they live in the backwoods and, you know, who knows what they do and, you know, they're, they're dangerous and yada, yada, yada. They're always being painted this way. But yet one guy, Ryback, hits the ring and the entire Wyatt family runs. Now, all of a sudden, now the next time JBL tells me how scary they are and we don't know what they're capable of, of, I don't believe that because how scary are four guys that run away from one? Those characters are not being protected. If if, if I'm Bray Wyatt, if, if I'm Strowman, if, if I'm Rowan, if I'm Harper, and I'm putting myself in the shoes of those guys, I am not running away from one guy. It's just not going to happen. It's not realistic. And the minute they run in their chicken shit heels in 2015, well, now the announcers have to stop with the threat of being dangerous. We don't know what they're capable of, yada, yada, yada. They just ran away from one guy. So all that gets washed out. We, we spent weeks telling the story of the Usos being family and blood to Roman Reigns. They're his cousins. We know that story. Well, where are the Usos when Vince McMahon is booking their cousin, their flesh and blood, in a match against the entire locker room? Where are his cousins? You know, so so again, I'm watching the show. I'm looking at the Usos, who are supposed to be baby faces and fan favorites, and I'm saying to myself, okay, they're out here screwing around with New Day earlier in the show, but now their cousin, their own flesh and blood, the Samoan tradition, the Samoan unity, the Samoan family, it's, it's, it's their brother against the entire locker room, and they're not coming to help. Therefore, I'm not getting the Usos over. Now, if the Usos come out and attempt to help Reigns, and now they've got heat 
with Vince McMahon because their blood was more important than their job. Now you've got the Usos over. But the 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 minute we 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 forget about you know what what the Usos said last week. And this week, they're on to something else. We forget about what Ambrose said earlier in the show, and you don't see him at the end of the show. You keep doing this, that then you have an inconsistency with the characters. It's not about the baby face and the heel. It's about the character being consistent and staying true to himself. And it's not just the WWE. The TNA, uh, you know, just came back. They just re-signed uh, James Storm. They just put beer money back together. Why? The last time I saw James uh, Storm, he was David Koresh. He was leading around, you know, a, a you know a, a group of uh, followers, uh, you know, that were living and breathing and eating the words of James Storm. All of a sudden, whether there's a contract dispute or whatnot, Storm's gone. The next week he comes back and he wants to reteam with his own buddy, Bobby Roode. That doesn't protect James Storm. Where's the story? How did that come about? That That's where they're falling short and not getting the characters over. They're not writing for each individual character. What would, what would Dolph ziggler do if this really happened i'll tell you what Dolph ziggler would really do if vince mcmahon cuts a promo on the stage and takes a shot at Dolph ziggler Dolph ziggler would ask for a microphone and take a shot back you want to get him over that's how you get him over so the fact of the matter that they're not paying attention to the detail and the consistency in all of these characters there is nobody to believe in I learned a lesson from Bret Hart who told me when he would cut a promo and he knew he was going to win the match, he would say he was going to win the match in the promo. And, and Bret explained to me, Vince, the reason I do that is I know I'm going over. And if I say that in my promo and then I go over, the fans are going to believe what I say. So in other words, Dean Ambrose, when Dean Ambrose says, I'm going to get Kevin Owens, you got to get Kevin Owens. And again, let me make this clear. This is not on Dean Ambrose. This is on the inconsistency of the writing. And, and like I said, here's a, here's a perfect note. I just got off of watching an episode of the Attitude Era last week. Paul Bearer and Jerry Lawler, you know, had a conversation, and it was when when, when Paul Bearer came out that he was um, Kane's uh, father, and and that they're having an interview, and they don't know the cameras on, and Lawler is basically saying, "Tell me about how you banged, you know, take his mother." You know, Lawler wants the dirty details. Paul Bearer then answers Lawler. Keep, keep in mind, Taker's Taker's few is with Paul Bear and Kane. So, you know, Lol is laughing, getting a big kick out of this. Uh, you know, th then he comes back later in the show and he apologizes. I didn't know the cameras were on, yada, yada, yada. We go to the next show. I, and I got to tell you, I forgot what I wrote for these shows. I don't remember them because I never really watched them back. So I'm watching the show back, and the show's going along, and there's an on-camera with JR and, 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 and Lola. And all of a sudden, Lola feels something behind him. He looks over his shoulder, and there's Taker. And Taker lays out Lola, beats the ever-loving crap out of him. Why? Because the week before, Lola made comments, of de degrading comments about Taker's mother. So putting yourself in the shoes of Taker, Taker now has to do something about that the following week. I can't tell you how many times, bro, when, when, when the angle was between Cena and Taker and Paul Heyman was going out there and verbally burying Taker, verbally burying him, and Taker never laid a hand on Paul, on, on, on Paul Heyman. That's not protecting Taker. 
if Heyman's going to take all these cheap shots at him and continue to get away with it, then he's going to keep doing it. How many times back in the day did freaking take a shutdown Paul Bearer? How many times? But yet, here's Heyman, not scared, not worried. Berry's, Berry's taker at will. Taker never does anything to them. That's the that's the inconsistency of every character. You know, meanwhile, we're calling Taker a dead man. He's the legend. He's 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 this, that, and the other thing, but he's letting a big fat out of shape guy run him down and he's not doing anything about it. You're not protecting Taker. And that's the problem today in wrestling. And and listen, I don't know if these people are writing the shows at the last minute. I don't know if there's too many writers involved. I don't know if Vince McMahon does not know how to write detail because he never had to write it. Uh, you know, I know when I was there, I mean, we took care of all that. I don't know what it is, but I do know the inconsistency of the characters week to week to week to week to week is what is preventing them from getting over. Now, let's put that back to back with the 50-50 booking. And the 50-50 book, booking is I win one week, you win the next. I win one week, you win the next. I win one week, you win the next. So you have as many wins as you have as many losses. You're like a 500 baseball team or, or football team or basketball team or hockey team. You're not good and you're not bad. You're just mediocre. Now, I explained this in the past. This is a formula that works in, in booking when the characters are over. When you're getting into a feud between The Rock and Austin, and Rock and Austin are both established and both over and both megastars, then Austin could get over on Rock next week. You can come back the following week. Rock gets over on Austin. The following week, Austin gets back on Rock. The following week, going into the pay-per-view, you want to get all the heat on the heel because you want to see the babyface get his comments uh, at, at the pay-per-view. It doesn't work that way anymore. That's how it used to work. But the fact of the matter is if nobody's over, and we're doing 50-50 booking, we've got a lot of 500 baseball teams. So how can any fan, that any fan, especially the kids, if the kids are a huge part of their audience, how can the kids get behind a Dolph Ziggler and say, man, that Dolph Ziggler, he's my, he's my favorite wrestler. He's really the best when Ziggler's winning one week, losing ne the next week. Winning, losing, winning, losing, winning, losing. Nobody is going to get over. The WWE needs to make a decision of who they're going to go with. Who are we going to go with? Who are we going to build? Who are we going to run with? This was, listen, I don't care what anybody says. This was such a, in my opinion now, such a poor error in booking. And I'm going to get back to where I started. I talked about TLC. And I talked about, you know, what Raymond's did to uh, Triple H. And since then, every single week, they've been putting steam on Reigns, steam on Reigns, steam on Reigns. He knocked Vince McMahon out twice. Steam on Reigns, build Reigns. They forgot the whole other car, the whole other roster because all the concentration was on getting Reigns over, getting Reigns over, getting Reigns over, getting Reigns over. And I'm going to say this. They were doing a good job. I didn't like the fact that they were ignoring the whole rest of the roster, but they were doing a good job of getting Reigns over and building Reigns and making him believable and making people believe in him. All of a sudden, the first week that Brock Lesnar shows up, what does Brock Lesnar do? He drops Roman Reigns with an F5 right there in the middle of the ring, dead. One guy, one-on-one, -on -one, dead in the middle of the ring. So you've built them for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. You don't have him to the point yet of where Brock Lesnar can drop him with an X5 because Brock Lesnar is already over and Brock Lesnar has a lot of fans. So now you're going to have some people that are going to cheer Lesnar doing that. 
Again, the inconsistency. Now, now here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Does Reigns come back this week and go after Lesnar? That's the question. Because if you want to build Reigns and you and, and you want to stay true to Reigns and protect the character, then he needs to be on the hunt for Brock Lesnar on Monday. You've got to be consistent with your characters on the show. The fact that you're not, the fact that there's 50-50 booking is why nobody is getting over. And that's a huge problem today. You know, people are asking me, oh, you know, AJ Styles and this Bullet Club and Nakawama and Hakaguchi and all these guys are coming over from New Japan. What do you think about it? What do I think about it? They can't get guys on their own roster over. You think AJ Styles is going to walk in and these guys from the Bullet Club in New Japan and they're just instantly going to be over? You know, you, you, you can't get over on wrestling matches alone. Some of the greatest ring technicians in the history of the business never made it to superstar status because they were good workers. They were missing a huge part of the game, which was the character. And that needs to be adjusted. That's the only way the wrestling, they're going to start getting new stars over. I mean, freaking Cena gets hurt all of a sudden. Cena's hurt. Orton's hurt. Daniel Bryan's hurt. Everybody's hurt. What are we going to do at WrestleMania? Well, we're going to call Chris Jericho back. We're going to, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to call Jericho back. Uh, we're going to call The Rock back. We're going to, we're going to go back to the well. Uh, to the old time is, you know, that 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 got us over back in the day. Why? Because they haven't built any new stars. Why haven't they built any new stars? Because of the exact reason that I'm giving you. They don't give you reason to stay behind these people. They don't stay true to the characters. They don't build the character. Characters. Oh, that's it. It's not, listen, people, it's not rocket science. And I say that every week. It's simple. All they need is somebody to pay attention to the detail, put themselves in the boots of every character they work with. Okay, this happened to Ryback last week. This is how Ryback's going to react this week. This happened to Bray last week. This is how Bray is going to is going to uh, 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 act this week. Now they do it sometimes. Sometimes they do it. You know, uh, Becky Lynch attacked Charlotte. Uh, this week. It was a follow-up from last week. But you've got to do that every time. You've got to follow it up every time, not once in a blue mood, because that's inconsistency. And when characters have inconsistency and different flaws week in, week out, you're not going to get them over. So that's it. That's my nuclear heat for this week. Man, I, I just got to tell you, I wish some people would just have a freaking open mind and listen. This, this, this is free advice. This isn't, you know, being a rocket science. This is simple television. This is simple writing for characters. This is simple how you get people over. It's simple. But you can't be set in your ways. You got to look at the situation and say, why are we only drawing 2,500 people in Birmingham, Alabama? What, 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 what's going on? Why are we only drawing th uh, 3,000 people here? You know, what, why is our rating down from a, a, you know, a, a six to, to a, a, a three? What, what happened? Open up your freaking eyes. Be willing to get better. If you go out there week in and week out and keep doing the same exact thing and nothing ever changes, how can you expect anything to ever change? If you don't change anything, how can anything ever change? So that's it. That's my advice. That's Nuclear Heat. This is WrestlingInc.com. I hope you tune into my channel. Try me out, VinceRussoBrand.com. Uh, I do video podcasting six days a week, a ton of content on that channel. But again, WrestlingInc.com, check it out all week long. I'll see you on Monday right here for the Raw Review. Take care, everybody.